Hey, y'all already know what's going on, man. DNA in the building. Attitude Era podcast in the building. We got a special, special, special guest in the building. My guy, Trick Williams. You know what I mean? Whoop that trick. I just was at the NXT show tonight, Roadblock. You know what I mean? You got a special guest, surprise appearance. They even tricked them at first. They ain't even, you know what I mean? They ain't even know it was you. And then, you know what I mean? Came through the other entrance. Um, my first question to you is like, how does it feel like to just, you know what I mean, start from where you started and now build that momentum to where, you know what I mean, there's such a pop when you, when you come out and they saying all the words and you got like, you got the momentum right now. Man, it's a great feeling, man. Like, it's something that we've been building for about three years now. You know, people have been chanting whoop that trip for a long time, but, you know, when they gave me that new beat, that new, that new theme, I think it really just took it to a whole new level. So to see everybody hop on the bandwagon, you know, you know, welcome. I'm glad you're here. Nah, for sure, for sure. Um, also being a part of the NXT brand, it's like you, you're under the brand with a legend. You know what I mean? A Hall of Famer, Shawn Michaels. What's that like? What's that experience like being? You know what I mean, in a brand that's under the leadership of somebody like Shawn Michaels. Yeah, man. I mean, Shawn is the goat. You know, I trust him. I would say the biggest thing I learned from him is timing. You know the importance of time and when to act, when not to act, and when to embrace moments. And um, yeah, man, me and Sean have had some real moments. You know, when I was waiting on my time, you know, I legit went to Sean's office. Yeah. I said, hey, I want the ball. And Sean looked at me and said, hey, a lot of people come in my office and say they want the ball. And if I give you an opportunity and you're not ready, I don't know if you're ever going to get the ball again. Mm. Straight up, you know, he looked at me, you know. And he said, I'm not sure you're ready, but, you know, you know, he'll sleep on it. You know, a couple of weeks later, you know, we we doing that on TV. That's crazy. And the rest was history. That's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, what what was your experience like when you won the NXT North American Championship? Oh, man. I knew about that. Man, took out Don Mysterio. Mm. You know, like, I would say that's really my first big breakout moment to let people know I'm here for real. You know, mm-hmm. Dom, he a great opponent. You know, bro, the arena was crazy loud. Yeah. Like, people was whooping trick and all that. That was cool. But the booze there was, you know, that's probably the first match I had with somebody where, like, you know, it was almost equally matched where people loved me and people hated him just as much, if yeah. not more. So, you know, that was a great moment for me. I think that's really what took me to a whole new trajectory with this, with this run of mine. Okay, okay. Um, so would you say like so far like where where you 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 list a few with Dom like your, your number one? Uh, I would say that's a good one. I'll say me and Dragon off probably got more, okay more memorable moments than me and Dom. Like every single time you hop in the ring with Dragon off, so I've had three matches with him already, and I, mean, I could just say that's probably three of my best matches. All with him, so okay, okay. He bring the best out of you. Now we was we was talking off camera, but now we on camera with one of the things I like about NXT because I'm a, I, my prime like I'm I'm back in now. I could officially say at first I didn't want to say I was fully back into wrestling. Welcome, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean because <laughs> I didn't want nobody to ask me a question that I ain't know. But, uh, yeah, but I'm yeah. back on point. But one thing I could say about NXT because I feel like it got it got. Obviously, with Shawn Michaels, you know, being the guy running things, it got that attitude error feel to it. Mm -hmm. But I feel like it also got, like, a new spin. And what I love is y'all creativity. creativity. So Mm -hmm. tonight, we watched the Asylum match. I never never even seen that. With the joints hanging from the ring, they taking all of them, the door, the table. That was wild. But you participated and won the Survivor Series Iron Man match. And, I Mm -hmm. mean, what, what what was that like? Man... Honestly, that's probably my favorite match of my career thus far. Man, that whole match, like, I think it it went over so well because it felt like a basketball game or a soccer game. Yeah. Like, I feel like people understand, you know, time limits, you know, and have to beat the buzzer. Like, I come from the sports world. I know you play some ball. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, being getting that shot clock is like, that's a great feeling. I don't care where you're from. Everybody understand that. So, to knock out four goals, you know, in the last... 45 seconds, you know, that's Tracy McGrady in 07, you know? Yeah, no, no, facts, facts. Watching it, watching it, I was just amazed on, like, how they could intertwine 
the Survivor Series theme with the Iron Man match, but with multiple people. Right. Because you know the classic Iron Man match, you know, one of the most iconic ones is Shawn Michaels For sure. and Bret Hart when they, you know what I mean, pulled off the hour. So For sure. to see him put a spin on it, that's why I said it got the attitude era, mm -hmm. like some of the matches, but then they'll put a spin. Like, you know, the steel cage is there. Yeah. But adding the asylum part. Yeah, yeah. All shots picking, idea too, by the way. Like he nah, you can tell. That. Yeah. You can tell. You can tell. Um what would be your dream match? If you could pick anybody to go against, what would you think would be your dream matchup? Well, I got two. Okay. And I've said this publicly before because I mean it. I want Gunter. Mm. And I want Roman Reigns. Mm. Those are my two. That's I'm going straight to the top. Yeah. 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 Now, those is two current. If you could pick one from like, you know For what I mean? All time? Yeah, they could be rest in peace if they're not here with us. But I'm just saying like, just somebody you like, yo... Oh man, I'm there's, here. I'm there's a really. rock, man. I feel like me and Rock would have had magic for sure. Mm. I would love to work with uh, Rick Rude. I would love to work mm. with Booker T. Man, just big personalities, man. Like, yeah, someone who we could bounce back off. You know that energy off of. You know, let the people decide. You know, someone who bring the best out of you. But you know, shoot, Stone Cold. Yeah. Uh, and Triple H, one of the best heels out. Facts, for sure. facts for sure. Um. You know nowadays, and and, and I'm gonna ask you this, but he gets a lot of he gets a lot from my my, my view, he gets a lot of flack on Twitter. Um, what what do you what do you feel about Dave Meltzer's ranking system, like the five star ranking system? Man, and I don't think he gets flack about that. I just think all his other opinions they they be on they be on this case. I, I ain't never heard of him. I don't know no Dave Meltzer. Nah. Nah. Oh, okay. Okay. Nah. Got you. Got you. Um. My next question for you, and I, we seen a part of this today, which is building up to, you know what I mean, what I feel like is the inevitable. What's the experience like breaking up with, like, you know what I mean, Carmelo Hayes? Because y'all was, was that dynamic duo. Bro, so I know you. I, I followed your journey for a while. Mm -hmm. You and Clips came up together. Yeah. Man, if Clips pulled some BS on you, bro, it would cut deep. Yeah, it would. You know what I mean? But in the back of your mind, like, hey. If we had a battle, I still got to do what I got to do. Like you got to get the best of me. And y'all had a battle before. Yeah, we had a we had an all wrestling bars battle. Yeah, y'all had a wrestling. Battle. And I seen that it wasn't too heated because it was out of love. Yeah. But you know, you definitely was on your game. Yeah, yeah. But if he betrayed you, you know what I mean. I feel like you would know that feeling. Like damn. And you know, it's actually very similar. Clip brought you into the game. Mello, you know, brought me into the game. You know, I debuted. He was right yeah. there. This is, you know, he was the man. You yeah. Know, he was the breakout tournament winner, all of that. You know, and it just sucks because when I finally got my own momentum, when I got to rolling, he wasn't there for me like I was there for him. Mm -hmm. but it's all good. This ain't no sob story. I'm going to see him. And when I see him, we're going to take care of business. We're going to handle it like man. For sure, for sure. I'm not, not going to go too much into that because that's building, but I just want to ask you one last thing because it's layers to that. Like you said, like, I know in my battle career, certain matchups that I had was like the finding moments to not I mean not even for the people, because there's some matches that the people want to see, right. but then there's certain matches that mean something to you. Exactly. So whenever that does happen between you and him, is do you feel like that's one of those matches? Like, you know, because there's certain battles I'm winning to, like I can't lose this battle. Mm -hmm. I know I'm not going to sleep right if I lose it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that way? Like, if y'all ever go toe to toe, like, yo, this is one I got to win for me. Man, I think uh, I think it would feed families. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, the chemistry we have between each other is undeniable. You know what I mean? Like, I've been watching him work for a long time, and he obviously he's been watching me too. Yeah. So I just feel like once we get in the ring, you know, it's gonna be like water. Everything's gonna be smooth because I know what he's gonna do. Yeah. But um, I'm looking forward to it. I know the people want to see it, but yeah, man, we just gotta wait and see. Yeah, we're going to wait and see. That's, that's going to be one for the ages if it does happen. Um, you mentioned Roman Reigns. Y'all do have something similar, like, with your backgrounds. Talk to me, because, you know what I mean, before you was the superstar that you are now in the WWE, you got a football background. Like, how did that, I mean, how did that come about? Was that something that you thought you, thought you saw yourself doing before this happened, or was it, like, always going back and forth between wrestling and football? Yeah, man, like, football was life, like. Coming from where I'm from, like, that's what you do. You either play football or you play basketball or you're still in the city doing something. Yeah. And uh, I played football. 
and I made it up. I played University of Hampton, transferred to the University of South Carolina, and then went undrafted to the Philadelphia Eagles. Mm. And um, played wide receiver, you know. So a lot of what you see on Tuesdays, man, that's that's who I've been for a long time. The trash yeah. talking, the swag, the aura, like that's just what it is. You gotta know how to talk, cause you know that's the culture. But um, yeah, I got cut from the Philadelphia Eagles, and my agent was actually trying to sign me up with the XFL. And at the time, it was owned by Vince McMahon. So I don't know what happened, but somewhere in the paperwork, you know, XFL, you know, must have passed my my film, and they saw me and said, "Hey, we want to bring you in for a WWE tryout." And up to that point, I never once thought about being in the WWE. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. But like once that moment hit, I'm like, bro, this might be perfect for me. Like I never really thought about it until that moment. I went to a tryout and I didn't even get signed the first time. But that's when I really knew and said, man, I could do something with this right here. Yeah. So I moved back to Philly. I trained there and I've been wrestling ever since. No, nah, that's an amazing story, man. That's an amazing story on how like a super career blossom from, you know what I mean, another opportunity. For sure. Um, let me ask you about you and Booker T. Like, what is it like working with Booker T? I read this, you can confirm it or not, that Booker T was one of your mentors, you know what I mean, coming into the game. So what is it like now that, you know what I mean, he's one of like the main front runners holding down NXT? Oh man, that's Uncle Book, man. Okay. You know, like, you know, I won't call him an old head because he, he ain't really old, but yeah. you know, just a man who's been through it and, you know, can drop gems and drop knowledge of the game, you know, and that's who he's been for me my entire career. You know, before, I would say the people was even chanting like they are now, Booker's always said, hey, when you when you hit this move right here, you know, hit it like this, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he always give you that game. So, I, mean, I, I for sure always appreciate Booker, you know, and, you know, a lot of people say don't meet your heroes. But I can say it's honestly been a good experience with Booker because it, it's been number love. Now that's fine. Um, I also seen you was inspired by Kofi Kingston. Is that sure. correct? It okay. Is. So it is. what 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 like what what did you see from Kofi Kingston that you was like, yo, either I gotta do this or like that move right there, I gotta come up with my own, or I might gotta. I mean, I gotta borrow this real quick. Man, I'm gonna be real with you, man. So I got cut from the Eagles. I think it was 2018. Mm -hmm. And Kofi must have won his, you know, his WrestleMania moment. It must have been 2019. This is right when I got back into wrestling, into watching. And I'm at my boy's house watching, you know, Kofi do his thing. And I ain't gonna lie, my boy's literally in tears. Yeah. Like, man, this moment is so much, man. I know you, I know you ain't been watching like that, but this is just such a beautiful thing, man. And I can just feel the, you know, what that moment did for my boy. I'm like, man, like the inspiration he felt, like, man, you know, it's an awesome feeling to be, to feel represented. And, you know, me watching Kofi do that right there, it's like, okay, there's something in this that I want for myself right here. Like that whole Kofi mania moment, you know, really inspired me to dive in head first and get my career jumping. Nah, that's, that's definitely, that's definitely uh, super. Um. I got three more questions for you. This one, you know what I mean? I just got to get your take as a wrestling analyst. And me and you was just speaking about this. What are your thoughts on the current, you know what I mean? Which I want to say like triangle, Cody Rhodes, The Rock, Roman Reigns. Uh, you know, originally it started off with The Rock and Roman Reigns. I don't know if they already had it in the plans or the people shifted them, but not a rock turn hill. Like what are your thoughts on that whole like dynamic? Yeah, man. I mean, they got me seated. You know, I'm glued to the TV watching yeah. every single Friday. Man, I'm just curious to see what's going to happen. You know, I have my ideas of what could possibly happen. Yeah. But I ain't going to speak on it yet, but, you know, I know for sure I'm glued to the TV set every single time they own. So. And what do you prefer? You prefer the rock being the hell or, or you would rather, you know what I mean? Because the way he started off was, you know, that's how he's been every time he's came back. But now I feel like... Versace shirt rock is I feel like it's a mix of like yeah. corporation and Hollywood rock together. Yeah, man, whatever allows rock to do his thing, you know. And I don't feel like there's been a you know a slight difference between, you know, Cody got in between his story with Roman. But me personally, I like when Rock can just talk his trash, man. That's, yeah. That's the rock that I used to watch when I said, Okay, I wanna do this because cause I wanna talk my trash the way Rock talk his trash. I like that, you know. So, you know, I'm glad he talking. I'm glad he being himself. Yeah, the Rock, 
to me, in my opinion, he's definitely prime rock is like top three shit talkers ever. It's sure. Rick, it's Rick Flair, it's The Rock. I don't, I don't know who and I got. Dusty. In the, yeah, yeah. I love Dusty, man. Yeah. Dusty can talk. Yeah, I will, I will put those three in there. But um, what, what? First, I'm gonna ask you your battle rap top five. Okay. And I mean any order, and I'm gonna ask you like your wrestling around Rushmore, and then we good. So what's the? Well, a lot of people don't know that. Let's clarify that. So shout out to my guy Trick. He's tapped into the battle rap culture. Sure. Not mean URL, all the other leagues. So what is it? Not mean who's five people like if if you not mean on your downtime when you're not in the ring that you like yo. <laughs> they drop a battle. I got. I gotta see what he's doing in the battle. Okay, no order. No order. I like Charlie Clips. Charlie Clips. Arsenal. Awesome. Reed Dollars. I know it's a throwback. But nah, like Reed nah. Reed Dollars as well. Shadi Aura. Shadi Aura. And my dog DNA. All right, gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> so that's the, that's that's a diverse five though. Yeah. Clips. Shadi Aura. And it's, Reed Dollars. It's, it's just like what we do, Arsenal. bro. Arsenal is the ultimate heel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He come in with the cheap shots. You know, yeah. I love it. You know, Shadi Or he got his own style. Own style, and he's a big wrestling fan. Big too. wrestling fan, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. And I, matter of fact, he had a battle with Arsenal. I had to watch it five times to really understand everything he said. Yeah. But every single time I watch it again, I'm like, damn, I didn't even catch that ball. Nah, he gets before. crazy. He gets Shady's crazy. Shadi's dope, man. Uh, um, you said Clips. Cl him. Clips. Clips is the ultimate baby face. Bro, Clips is crazy with the bars. Bro. Yeah. And you can tell when he going for real because, yeah. you know, he really annihilates you. Who, who else you said? You said, said, uh, you said Reed Dollars. Reed Dollars, okay. bro. Shout out to Philly. Yeah. yeah. That's probably when I first got into battle rap. I think my cousin showed me some Reed Dollars. Uh, crazy. Yeah. And then I feel like me, I, 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 I could be good or bad. You got some, you got some million, millions of views yeah, on yeah, battles, yeah, bro. Yeah, so for sure, for sure. And putting on for the brand. Coach. For sure, for sure. And what what would be a wrestling Mount Rushmore? Ooh, top five? Mm-hmm. How many is it? Four or five in Russia? Four, four, it's four. four. Okay. Yeah, it's my <laughs> uh, I'm going Rock, of course. Rock. I'm going Booker. Booker. I'm going Stone Cold. Stone Cold. I'm going Shawn Michaels. Am I bad at that? Yeah. Am I bad at that list? Am I bad at that I'm going list? Going Shawn Michaels, yeah. Nah, man. Y'all see, shout out to Chalkline, too. I got the, Sh the Shawn Michaels jacket on. I mean, it bless with good. <laughs> so, yeah, we yeah. But, yo, man. Shout out to everybody tuning in, man. Make sure y'all subscribe. Y'all know where to find this guy all the time, man. Every Tuesday, NXT. Soon enough, y'all gonna see him on that main roster, too. Shout out to my guy, Trick Williams, in the building. Attitude Era Podcast. We got it.